praise. Can you stand up and give God some praise? Give Him some glory. Give Him the honor. Thank you in advance. 
for all that you have done, what you are doing, and what you're getting ready to do. And it is in the matchless name of Jesus we do pray. Amen.
is there anybody testimony that said, I'm going to serve the Lord? Hallelujah. I said, I choose to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I could go back if I wanted to, but I made a decision that for the rest of my life, I will serve the Lord. Come heaven, I want. I choose to serve the Lord. Friends and no friends, I choose to serve the Lord. Is there anybody that's got the testimony that says, I'm going to serve it? I said, I'm going to serve it until I die.
are here to give God what's due Him. Hallelujah. A lot of people choose to be depressed this time of year, but I choose to praise Him. Because I ain't got no reason to be depressed. Hallelujah. Because every time I turn around, He keeps on blessing me and He keeps on keeping me. Hallelujah. I'm going to let it go. Glory to God. Get stuck when you start thinking about the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done. Amen. Listen, God is so good. He's better than good to us. Amen. Can we just praise Him together and clap our hands and tell God thank you? We serve such an awesome God. Amen. He, he continues to amaze me and blow my mind in the great wonders that he has done and what he's in, what he is doing. Amen. I got a made up mind that I'm going to praise him till the day I die. Hallelujah. Good or bad, my posture is I choose to give God the praise. Listen, I'm excited, amen, about the things that God is doing uh, in the lives of his people, but I'm especially excited about uh, what these two young ladies are getting ready to come and share with us and bring us greetings. Um, our national president, uh, the Reverend Dr. David Peoples, amen. I don't know if he's watching, but he, him and his wife got honorary doctorates today, amen. So we thank God for them, our national president, amen. But he, he started this initiative uh, called the PNBC Healthcare. Uh, we have our own healthcare, amen. Can't too many black denominations say that they have it, amen. So these young ladies, are gonna come and talk to us about it and may give us some information and we want you uh, to, to hear about it and I'm sharing with uh, Pastor Martin in the office the benefits of this and how it's changing lives and helping people because not only does it help you as an individual but it can also help your church amen and so these are partners of our convention they sponsor um, our convention amen and so they're here to share with us what I believe will help us and change our lives because one thing about it we as African Americans, we suffer because we don't have health care and we don't go to the doctor. Amen. And let me tell you, this ain't no Obamacare. All right. Y'all ain't saying that. This ain't no Obamacare. Ain't nothing hidden about it. Amen. But they want to help us. Amen. And they're going to explain that uh, to us. And our region was kind of like, y'all, we were the first region they came to with this. And so we're kind of like the, the, the launching pad, the satellite, the you know, whatever you want to call it uh, for this. Um, and these two young ladies are passionate uh, about what they do. And so I'm going to let them come in their own way. Amen. They're going to introduce themselves. Amen. To us. And they're going to tell us a little bit about why they're here. Can we put our hands together? Amen. 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 I, was, I was sitting back there and I was thinking, um, you know, Pastor Martin and Pastor Martin, you morning and I just I love that you know we um, as, as the president here said that you know the southern region region was one of the first places we kind of really stepped into with this resource that um, that president peoples had and it's so funny because we heard so many amazing things about the southern region and we came to y'all's conference and it was uh, the president here said you just got to come to this you got to get into the room in the southern region and with the people. And I've been here like 20 minutes and I'm like, oh, they, they know presence. <laughs> I'm like, these, these are presence people. So I feel like we're, we're in really good company. So um, if you all haven't seen our faces or seen maybe some of the videos or even at the conference or the, the national convention, I'm Kristen Ward and this is Morgan Hill. And uh, we're really here just representing and making sure that we're communicating and sharing the information around uh, PMPC healthcare. Um, which has already been stated, a huge, huge initiative and resource for a church. This is stuff you only see in secular spaces, usually, right? And I just love that the president is so passionate about making sure that PNBC has a life-changing and a life-saving resource, and that's PNBC Healthcare. You probably have gotten emails or have gotten a hold of the website, and if you haven't, 
We just wanted to make sure that we could be here with you all and communicate and share exactly what it is. We're in a, a very unique time, I think, in history, but we're also in a very specific time in the healthcare world of the year, which is open enrollment. And I'm gonna hand it over to Morgan so she can share a little bit more um, just about what this really is and what you can expect and then specifically what you can do. I know a lot of people here, you, you either have health care or you don't have it or you're thinking about it or you're seeing a lot of stuff from commercials and TV and ads and things like that. But we want you to know that there is a resource right here within the community of PNBC that you can get affordable health care, robust health care, health care not just for you, but also for your family, also for your business, also for your church staff and musicians and things like that. So I'm gonna hand it over to Morgan, but we're so excited to be here and just to be able to, um, to be with you all and to host presence with you all, but also to share just more about this resource. Yeah. I think Kristen said so much. I mean, she did a good job. Um, but thank you everyone, we're excited to be here. Thank you, uh, President Deborah Williams for having us here also. I mean, of course, the President of People is online if you're watching. Um, but one of the reasons I like to always share the why behind this resource was established at the national level. And the why is because it's truly here, as I believe uh, both have said, is to save lives. So when you look at the African American demographic and the healthcare, how it impacts us, we are actually, um, out of all the races in America, we die at the fastest rate compared to other races because of our healthcare. Um, when you look at all of the different uh, healthcare disparities when it comes to high blood pressure, when it comes to diabetes, when it comes to high cholesterol, anything that's a negative, we also cap out at the highest compared to other races and ethnicities. And so what that tells us is that it's a need for this in our communities that we know that the church, PNBC, is the cornerstone of the community. And so we want to launch it here because we do believe that it's not only going to save us money, it's not only going to impact our health, but it's going to literally increase the longevity of our life. So that's why it was launched. Um, the other piece of it is we understand that there's different, uh, let me see, there's different aspects of healthcare, right? And so we know that there's some individuals that qualify for Obamacare. We know that there's some individuals that are on Medicare. We know that there's some individuals that neither of those work for them. And so we have a solution for that. And so what we recommend is we actually have a phone number, a website that you can get a free healthcare review, whether it's Medicare, whether you qualify for a subsidy, and maybe you want help determining the right subsidy because we know that all Obamacare plans aren't the best plans. So maybe you want someone to walk you through that plan, or maybe neither one of those fits, and so you need something different, which we have exclusive plans. The plans are exclusive to PNBC. These plans have mental health care, they have hospitalization, they have uh, preventative care, they have doctor's visits, all at a copay. And so we want to make sure that you know your options, and so the best way for us to do that is to either have you access the phone number and call in, or for you to get an actual review online, which you can do that too. And so we will be available afterwards. Um, I'll definitely set the phone number here in a minute so you can come and you can um, get that information so you can have access to that free benefit review. But the last thing we wanted to make sure everyone understands is that if you have a plan with us, the church, you on every single enrollment application, because these plans are home home, we get to say where those proceeds go. And so your church will actually get a piece of those proceeds. Every time you pay monthly, a piece goes back into the church. And that was one of the things that we wanted to make sure when we set this up, is that not only will we be able to pay our claims, but we'll also be able to put a piece back into the church so that they can use those funds for whatever the community needs. All right, so let me give y'all the website. It's www.pnbchealthcare.com, so you can get a free review. There's also a phone number. I hope I look up and see some cell phones taking this number down. The phone number is 602-825-2823, and you can get a free review. And that's for, that's for individual, that's for business, if you own a business. That's also for 65 and older, that is for 64 and under. It is a holistic, well-rounded program that we have to help everyone. Amen. For those that are watching, we did have the information for you on the screen. Amen. So we want you to take advantage of this. Amen. Who church don't want money to come back to them? Amen. And so uh, we want you to make sure that your church signs up.
when you call in and you say, you tell them, hey, I'm with Golden View, I'm with St. Mark or whatever church you're from, amen, we want to make sure that our convention, but as well as your church is being blessed, amen. And then we want you to live, amen. We want you to live, amen. Uh, one thing about it is my wife will tell you, I don't mind going to the doctor. I will go, I will go, I will go. She don't like going, but right now she ain't got no choice. Amen. Uh, but we thank God for this initiative. Amen. And again, they'll be set up, amen, after service so you can get more information to take back. Amen. Because some of y'all got grandparents and some folk. Amen. I don't know if they said it, I, they might have did, but I think they have a new Medicare option as well, right? So, amen. They got Medicare. So we got everybody covered. Amen. Ain't no reason why you shouldn't have no good health care coverage. Amen. Well, we're getting to that point where it's time to give. Amen. Amen. Pastor Matthew Long Jr. is coming to take us further in uh, our offertory appeal and our giving. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No, bring the baskets to Uncle Dexter. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give our great God a head clap of praise together? The true our God is great and great and to be praised. Listen, uh, we've come to receive uh, the Lord's offering today. And you, like myself, came to church on a Saturday with much intention. Even on the uh, three, four o'clock service, we came here to the Fountain Inn uh, Church. <laughs> I want to say the least church of Mountain Inn, the Golden View Baptist Church. And we came on purpose. As I was writing, I was uh, asking the Lord, really, what should we do in this moment of giving? And he led me to one scripture, Mark chapter 11, verse 20, uh, it's 22, I believe, 23 and 24. And it says, then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubts in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you received, it will be yours. I need your help real quick and turn to your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor. No, no, no. Yeah. Put, put some honey on your voice. Say, hey, neighbor. Do you believe God? I want you to sow twenty dollars with me, believing that we're gonna have whatever we need from God. You might need just a little bit more of that health and strength. You might need just a little bit more groceries. You might need just a little more favor on your workplace job. You might need just your kids, your kids to act right for the rest of the school year. I need you to join me today with a twenty dollar. Have faith in God. See, one more time to your neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor. Do you believe God? on the screen that you can sow that's dollar sign GBBC 44 again that's dollar sign GBBC 44 and if you can't go to the cash app you can go to give the buy to Golden View Baptist Church search Golden View Baptist Church and click on the PNBC tab again Golden View Baptist Church PNBC tab and so at twenty dollars, I believe God see. Now, can I pray for you while you're getting that together? I, I like it when you give it your phone because I gave the my phone. Let me pray for you, kind Father, and Lord. We thank you for another opportunity to sow. Now, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that this seed that we sow, that it will be released from our hands. But, Father, let our heart be implanted into the seed. So as the seed goes into our future, Lord, let it come back with our heart. Because, Father, we believe you and we have no doubt. So, Father, we thank you in advance for the harvest that's coming in our lives. Father, we thank you for the plentiful harvest that's going to run over to bless our neighbors. Father, we thank you that there's so much of a harvest. The Lord, our friends and family will be able to come back and feast off of this harvest because we believe 
God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, let's see. How are we going to do? I, I'm going to ask that. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, if you are giving me a cash app, please make sure you put PNBC in the memo line as well. I'm going to just ask that everybody stand up and turn to your right. And if we all can turn towards the windows and come on down, I believe we can all get at the same time. Starting from here. If you gave with your phone, touch the, touch the basket with your phone. I believe God's word that provides seeds to the soul. So we're good together. He's not here today because he's my friend. He's not here today because he is 
the South Carolina PNBC president. He's not here because I just wanted him to be here, but he's here because this is who God has ordained for this moment to be here. And I believe that if you pray in the pew, that there will be preaching in this pulpit. And so today, uh, I introduce the song and present to others my friend and my brother, Pastor Yancey Martin Sr. Amen. And so after St. Mark comes and gives us the best two selections. Y'all know what it's going to take to get him where he needs to be. Amen. We didn't want y'all to drive this far to sing one song, but we want y'all to sing two songs to get your pastor right. Amen. And we thank God for Lady Martin being here. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So y'all let's put our hands together as St. Mark is coming. Amen. And they're all the way to lead us. Amen. In those uh, two selections. Amen. Y'all can come up here or however, whatever make y'all comfortable. Amen. Y'all at home. Amen. 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 Let's give God praise. Amen. As he said, we got a second mark missionary Baptist Church. First, we want to give honor to God, who's the head of our life, to the pastor of this church, Pastor Williams, our great pastor, Pastor Martin. Amen. We're going to give y'all two selections. We're going to get on out your way, all right?
in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing, sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your life and your lives, words, actions, whatever be done in the name of the Master, Jesus. Thanking God, the Father, every step of the way. Amen. God's word for God's people, and we know his word is already blessed. Amen. For a while tonight, I want to talk from this subject. I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful. We need your prayers. My brothers and my sisters, it is again that God has given us favor over the enemy, problems, situations, and life's ups and downs. How do I know, you may ask? The simple fact is that last night wasn't our last night. You see, my beloved, God in his special way, his omnipotent way, his sovereign way, his miraculous way saw fit to touch you and I early this morning with his finger of love. I know that for some it don't move you. I know for some it don't touch you. I know uh, for some it doesn't mean anything to you. But can I testify early in this sermon that I'm so glad he did what he did for me. He touched me, he rocked me, he shook me, he breathed on me, he spoke to me, he held me, he picked me up, he healed me, he delivered me, he hid me, and he just keeps on blessing me over and over again. You see, my beloved, that's why I love the songwriter, the way he put it when he said it like this. He said, I woke up this morning, got out of my bed, looked around, this is what I said, thank you, Lord, for the blood you shed. You put a roof up over my head. Thank you, Lord, for another day. All of the blessings you sent my way could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but you told them to get back and behave. And that's why I love that part of it. Another blessing. Is it anybody in here on tonight that can testify that the God that we serve continues to bless us over and over and over again? And, and I know it's some folk up in here on this Saturday afternoon that can testify with me that the Lord we serve is not good sometimes, but God is good all the time. And, 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 and I must, and I'm just thankful that He's on my side. And since he's on my side, I will walk like he walks with me. I, I will talk like he talks with me. And I will tell everyone that the joy that we share has been tarried there. None other has ever known. Uh, is there any thankful folk up in here at Golden View Baptist Church that can help me turn a cave into a cathedral like David did the cave of Adullam when he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My, my, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You see, my beloved, I found out that when you are thankful, somebody you don't, and when you are thankful somebody, you don't mind praising God because you understand that the way to confuse the enemy, to baffle the enemy, and to mess with the enemy is to praise God two type of ways. And that's when you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. Truth be told, all of us have been in a moment, a time, and a space in our lives where we didn't want to shout out, thank you, Jesus. Times when we didn't want to say amen. Times when we didn't feel like praise the Lord. Times when hallelujah wasn't on our way or our mouth. Times when church folk got on your last nerve in church. Times when your spouse, boo, thing, friend, or whatever got on your bad side. Times when friends walked out in a way and you felt like giving up and throwing in the towel. But oh, child of God, when you begin to think about Jesus, the ways that he made, the doors that he opened, the blessings that he gave, the healings that he's done, the things that he blocked, you begin, you begin to say that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. And my beloved, when you can testify that the 
Lord has blessed you, that the Lord has covered you, that the Lord has done things for you, you can come into this house and be thankful. Oh, can I get some participation from some folk up in here this afternoon? Tell your neighbor that you are thankful because it could have been the other way. Tell your neighbor that you are thankful because he did it again. Tell your neighbor that you are good, that God has been good to you. And in spite of what you've been through, you still got a joy on the inside of you. Is there any believer in here tonight that can tell God, God, all I want to let you know is that I am a thankful somebody. I know I ain't got it all together. I don't cross every T and dot every I, but I know I serve God that looks beyond all my thoughts and consider and continue to see my needs. Is it any blessed left in the house today that can testify that I am a living testimony? Should have been there. Could have been there. But the Lord. God has been good to me. And why just for the sake of doing it? Why come church and sit down like a bump on the log? Why come to church and don't participate in praise and worship? If God has touched you, if God has done something for you, if God has lifted you up, if God has turned you around, when you walk in the house, your feet should get light because can't nobody move you like Jesus. Uh, case in point, the text that the Lord has taken us to on this day has taken us the book of Colossians to show us that if you praise, if you study his word, if you shout in or dance, that God will get the glory and you will be a blessed somebody. Can you tell somebody I am a blessed somebody? You see, Colossians chapter 3 is part of a letter written by the apostle Paul to the Colossians church, to the Colossian church. You see, the broader context of the letter to the Colossians involves addressing certain heres heresies and false teachings that was influencing the Christian community in Colossians. And can I just stop right there and deal with that? It's just like our community. We got all type of other influences that are trying to stop us from serving God, trying to stop us from saying it don't take all of that, trying to stop us from even coming into the church parking lot. But can I let you know to tell the next person that tell you it don't take all of that? Let them know. Where were you when I was about to lose my mind? Where were you when I didn't have no money in my pocket? Where were you when my health was failing? Where were you when my steps got short? Sit down somewhere. I shout the way I shout. I praise the way I praise. I run the way I run. Because God has been good to me. And is there anybody up in here tonight that can testify that God keeps on blessing me over and over and over again? You see, my beloved, if we're going to get the blessings from God, if we're going to walk in the church and every, in, in, in every space in this world and know that we are somebody, that when we walk into that space, I am just thankful to let God order my steps. You know that's what the Bible says, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Everybody, when God touches you, you should have something about you. Everybody, when God puts his finger on you, you can shoot you should get a case of the king help us. And all that is, is you can't control what's going on in you because you know God is working on the inside to let it show up on the outside. So every day of my life, if you see me walking a little funny, it's just the God in me telling me to keep on going in Jesus' name. And if they keep looking at you, can I tell you what to tell them? Tell them to hold your mute. Why you get your praise on? Well, I'm about done. I, I got three points, then I'm about to go. The first thing Paul wants us to understand, Paul says, Yancey, tell the people that we must praise with peace. Oh, praise with peace. Oh, okay, where is that in the text? It's right there in verse number 15 in the message Bible. Look at it with me if you don't mind. Paul says, praise with peace. It says, let the peace of Christ keep you in, in, in 
keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of these, none of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivating thankfulness. Oh, I like that right there. Paul is letting all of us know on tonight that if you are going to praise with peace, you can't allow the devil to infiltrate your territory. If you're going to praise with peace, you can't let what's going on on the outside affect you on the inside. If you're going to praise with peace, you got to tell somebody this joy that the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away and can I tell you this right here when we all praise in peace can I tell you what happens when it's right there in the text when we all praise in peace he'll keep us in tune with each other it ain't no big use and little eyes all of us are on the same team serving the same God worshiping the same God and we might not praise like you we might not throw up hands like you but we know how to rock ourselves when God is touching us. We know how to bob our head when God is dealing with us. And we know how to shout out for a hallelujah if God has been good to you. Oh, is it a test in the place tonight? Excuse me. If God has touched you, if God has moved in your life, can you just throw up a hand? And I will say, if I couldn't say a word, I'll just wave my hand. You got to praise with peace. Ah, Paul says he will give you peace that surpasses understanding. People will try to figure out how can you continue to be happy in Jesus when things around you are all discombobulated. The people will try to figure out that you're coming from doctor to doctor and you still have that disease. How are you getting peace in your praise? Because you got to understand, Paul had already told him to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Where the absent are present, it's going to be all right. So if you're going to praise with peace, you got to let everybody, I'm a win some, I'm a lose some. But every day of my life, I got victory in Jesus because I understand now when I lose that the power is not mine, but it is the Lord's. Is it any believer in here that can testify that I'm so glad that I know how to praise that's messing that's messing with me that's why God gives us peace I'm not talking about the peace that you get from the world that kind of peace I have to be in quiet in church okay okay that kind of peace I have to go along with the devil that, that the time you know you, can we be real you know how it is we go to the church meetings can I just say this and when we get to the church meetings you know what happened I'm just going to be quiet for peace sake. That's the world peace. But if you're a child of God and you go to a church meeting and things ain't right, you're going to say, God, all of my tongue, so what I say would be in line with what you want me to do. I don't want to be at all. I'm not going to sit down for peace sake. I'm going to be a poor soldier and I'm going to stand up for God because if I don't stand That's, that's, the type, uh, that's the type of peace I want. I want the type of peace that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, you know what it is. You know, you know they're hating on you when you walk in the church. That's that type of peace that makes you uncomfortable. I'm good with being uncomfortable because God has given me that type of peace to let me know that ain't nobody that's looking at me got no heaven, not no hell to put me in. I'm just marching at the Zion, know that God will. Okay, Paul says first, uh, we must praise with peace. Second thing Paul says, you must praise with his word. It's right there, verse 16. Y'all see it? Ain't your Bible. That means you tore it out. But if it's in your Bible, it's right there. Verse number six, you ain't your, ain't your Bible. Okay, <laughs> get another one. The Bible says in verse number 16, praise with peace, praise with his word. He said, let the word of Christ, I like, I want to stop right there. But then he said, let the word of Christ, the message, have the ruin of the house. Oh, Ooh. it tells him right there, he said, give it plenty of room in your lives. The Bible says, instruct and 
and direct one another using good common sense and say, save your hearts out to God. I, I, I like that, y'all. I got happy. I got happy because I'm trying to say, Lord, how can I praise with your word? He said, yes, every time you open up the book, you should get a little two-step in your foot. He said, I can prove it to you. Turn to Psalm 27. Say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? When the wicked even my enemies came up against me to eat up my flesh, oh, Lord, they stumbled and they fell. Can you tell your neighbor? Tell the enemy to try to attack me. When the enemy tries to attack me, the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord he says, he says, you got to praise with my word. When you praise with his word, the devil can't infiltrate your territory. When you praise with his word, you know how to fight the enemy off of you. How you fight the enemy off of you? And you in the hospital. Oh, I'm glad you asked. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, can you tell your neighbor I'm speaking healing over my life and your life? And I want to see you in that root. I want to bless you and your family room. I want to see you later on. I need you to be all right because I know them ladies just didn't come here just to come. They came here to give us the help that we might have a long life. Got to praise. I'm done now. See the text. He says, we must praise with peace. Yeah. After you praise with peace, he said, you must praise. Lord have mercy, you must be reading my son. I'm glad we wrote this together. Not only, not only should we praise with peace and praise with his word, uh, but we must praise with a dance. Well, I'm glad you was dancing tonight because we got to praise with a thing. Yancey, where is that in the Bible? It's right there. Uh, verse number 17. And I told y'all earlier, if it ain't in your Bible, yeah. The Bible says, let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever be done in the name of the Master, Jesus, thanking God the Father, every step of the way. And you might say, Yancey, how you get praise? I would have danced uh, because every day, every day with Jesus uh, is sweeter than the day before. And my beloved brothers and my sisters, uh, I'm so glad on tonight uh, that every day I thank Jesus uh, for what he's done for me. And since he's blessed me over and over again, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to send up my timber every chance I get. And when I send up my timber, something on the inside should start to shake on the bottom of my feet and let me know that God is good. Not sometimes, but that God is good all the time. Is there anybody in here on tonight that can thank Jesus for making my way, making your way here tonight? Is there anybody in here that can praise the Lord and tell God thank you? And when you begin to tell God thank you, you need to say something. You need to fill up your hands. And can I tell you, when you start to get contagious in the house, it gets from heart to heart and from mind to mind. And you start to two step up in the church. Y'all know how y'all used to do when I was in the club. Y'all were 
Hallelujah. Anybody just want to tell God thank you? I dare you to take a moment and just tell God thank you. I dare you to take a moment and give him what's due him. Hallelujah. I say, I ain't got a whole lot, but God, all I got is a thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody resting on your feet. Amen. We give God praise for the word. Amen. We got so much to be thankful for. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So ain't nobody got a reason why you can't walk in tomorrow with a praise already on your lips and in your feet. Hallelujah. And the thing about it is what I've discovered is that when we can't praise God, it's because we're not thinking. I'll say that again. When we can't praise God, it's because we're not thinking. Because thinking produces thinking. Y'all got that? So all you got to do is think about it. And you ain't got to go back to two years ago. You can go back to just this morning. You can go back just to the last five seconds. That even though you may not realize it, God did something for us. And so we got a right to be thankful. But tonight, I don't want to take it for granted and just assume that everybody that's watching or in this room knows who Jesus is. Because a lot of people come to church and a lot of people show up. They don't understand praise. They don't understand worship because they don't know who he is. You got people that's been in church all their life. They've been serving. They've been preaching. They've been teaching. They've been singing. They've been doing everything that we do in the church. But they don't know who Jesus is. It's a difference in knowing of him and knowing him. And it is very well possible that you can be in God's house and still not know who he is. So that's you tonight. We want to offer Christ to you. We want to give you this opportunity to either lift your hand or to come this way if you need to be saved or rededicate your life. Amen. And if you're watching, there's a number on the screen that you can call or text. We want somebody to pray with you. They'll answer the phone right now. All you got to do is call or text. And if they don't answer, keep calling till they answer. Does that mean that they're with somebody else on the line? But we don't want nobody to not know who Christ is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I told our church I got a I got a mandate and that's to help try to fill up heaven. And I got a shirt that says I'm just trying to fill up heaven. That's all I'm trying to do. I ain't trying to get nothing else. I just want to see heaven full. Because heaven is too big for just me and about three other people. Ain't nobody saying nothing. But heaven is big enough for all of us. Hallelujah. When I cross in the gates, I want to be able to see your face. Hallelujah. I don't want to talk to you. I want to see you up there. Because I want to get to where Jesus is. If there anybody need to be saved or rededicate your life, just throw your hand up. If you're watching, call and text that number. Or just type it in the chat. Say, that's me. Somebody's watching the screen. We want to pray for you today. We want to offer you Christ. Hallelujah. We don't want you to go to bed not knowing that if Jesus come back over in the night, oh, where you're going to be, we want you to have assurance today. Jesus is the way. He is the way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you desire prayer today, this altar is open. You can come. Amen. Maybe you don't need it, but you know that somebody that does, and you want to come stand in the gap. We want to pray tonight. We want to pray God's healing power, God's saving power, whatever it is that you need from God. He is a God that still answers prayer. He's the God of the now, and he's the God that can He's the God that will. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Every head bowed right where you are, but yet still, if you want to come to the altar, the altar is available unto you. Father, we thank you. We bless your name because you are a good God. You are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. You're wonderful all by yourself. And God, we pause in this moment, God, to thank you. We thank you for everything, God, that you are. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. We thank you just for being God and for being God all by yourself. We thank you for the opportunity, God, to be able to breathe the breath of life, God, to be able to have activity of our limbs and to be in our right minds. God, we thank you because we recognize that you've been better than good to us, that if it had not been for you, we don't know where we would be. So God, thank you for being on our side. Thank you for having our backs. God, thank you for being faithful and consistent in every way, oh God, that even when we were not faithful, even when we were not consistent in our walk with you, you've proven yourself, God, to
to look beyond that and to still meet our needs. And God, we're grateful tonight. We're thankful, God, for every way that you made. We're grateful for how you saved us. We're grateful for how you delivered us. We're grateful for how you turned us around. We're grateful for how, God, you, God, continue to pour out your healing virtue upon us. God, that when we were sick, that we didn't know how we were going to make it when doctors shook their heads, it was you that healed us. And tonight, for that, we say thank you. We thank you, God, that even though we may not like our jobs, we got a job to go to, God, that you continue, God, to supply the resources that we need to make sure that the bills are paid and that there's food on the table. We thank you for that tonight, oh God. We give you praise because we recognize that you are the one that's supplying all of our needs, God. And we're grateful tonight. We're grateful that you've not taken your hand off of us. You've not left us out here to try to figure out life by ourselves. But God, you constantly lead us. You constantly guide us. And for that, we are grateful. And so God, we pray tonight that you will continue to lead us, that you will continue to guide us. God, continue to help us to walk in the steps that you already ordained and set before us. Continue, God, to lead us, God, in that place of righteousness, in that place of holy living, in that place of freedom and deliverance that you call and purpose us to, oh God. We thank you tonight that we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed in our coming, and we're blessed in our going. God, we thank you tonight that you have made us the lender and not the barrier. You made us above and not beneath. God, we thank you tonight that no matter what we're faced with, no matter what we're dealing with, that you're going to cause it to work out for our good. For your word says, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love you and those who've been called according to your purpose. And so God, we thank you tonight that because we love you and you love us and we've been called to your purpose that things have to work out for us. So God, no matter what we left at home, no matter what challenges we left, God, we thank you tonight that some way, somehow, it's going to shift and work in our favor. We thank you that some way, somehow, things are going to turn and it's going to go upward. We thank you that some way, somehow, God, that you're going to make a way out of no way. Some way, somehow, you're going to save somebody's children. You're going to save somebody's marriage. Some way, somehow, God, you're going to cause things to look better and to be better. And so tonight, we believe by faith that it's already done. Because you're the God that's done it before. And if you did it then, you can do it now. So God, we thank you in advance for every miracle, for every sign, for every wonder. We thank you in advance for meeting every need in every area with nothing lacking. Now, God, I pray for the man of God who stood tonight. He's preached out the depth of his heart and the depths of his soul. I pray, God, that you replenish him, God, put the virtue back in his body. God, strengthen him, God, that he may be able to stand yet again on tomorrow. Give him a fresh anointing, God, give him a fresh wind, give him a fresh word and a fresh revelation that as he stands to declare your word, that somebody may hear and leave out better. I pray that you will keep his body strong, God. I pray that God, you'll give him longevity in the land of God. I pray, God, that whatever his household needs and whatever his church needs, God, that you will do it according to your will and according to his faith. Now, God bless your people. Keep us in the palm of your hand. For it is so in the name of the Lord Jesus, we do pray. And we thank you. If you believe it, clap your hands and say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all keep standing. We're going home. Hallelujah. Can we thank God for the man of God and for the word of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Just be thankful. Hallelujah. They see you skipping through Walmart and they're trying to figure out what you want. Tell her, I'm just on something called I'm thankful. Hallelujah. Because God has been just that good to me. Hallelujah. I'm telling you now, y'all see me skipping in the parking lot. It's just me thinking about how good it's been. Amen. And I give God praise. And Lord, thank you for coming. Amen. Thank you, St. Mark, for coming all the way from Bishopville. Amen. To be with us. Amen. And I pray.
pray that this ain't the first and last time that we see you. Amen. It's my hope and prayer that we'll see y'all in Baton Rouge. They tell me I don't say it right. That's how you're supposed to say it with a little, you know, a little flair on it. So it's Baton Rouge is what they say. That's how you're supposed to say it. So I ain't talking funny. I'm just trying to get it ready so that when I get there, I'll tell you one thing. If you ain't never had good barbecue, you ain't been, you got to go to Baton Rouge. They got some good barbecue down there. So we're looking forward to a high time in the Lord. Amen. All roads are leading here. We are coming up. We're going uh, to Memphis in January for the Midwinter Board Meeting where all of the National Baptist Conventions come together. The Black Baptist is going to take over Memphis. This is going to be interesting. Hallelujah. We're coming together. Amen. Ain't nothing like coming together. We're powerful together. Amen. And my prayer is Amen. That God will meet us and show up there. Amen. We're praying safe travels for you going back to Bishopville. Amen. Y'all get up and go to church in the morning. Amen. Y'all see uh, Morgan and Christian. They're going to be out in the vestibule, I think. Amen. They're going to be out there. So make sure y'all stop and see them and get the information. Amen. And if you don't need to get it for somebody that does. Amen. And the good thing about it is if you got an insurance that's working for you, they're going to encourage you to keep what you got. Amen. But if it's something that is not good for you, they're going to encourage you and they're going to show you what's better for you. And I'm a witness that they are saving money. Amen. They're helping people save money. And so if you're a business owner, I encourage you to stop by that table. Amen. And with them, uh, our general, our regional general secretary and I, we meet with them almost every Monday. Amen. And so they are, they're on us. And so y'all uh, just know that you're, if you ain't getting my emails, you're going to get them because I'm, gonna, I'm flooded because uh, where is Christian and where she go? Amen. She is like a warden. Like her last name is Ward, but like she stay on us and she make us do amen and all that stuff. So if you keep getting a bunch of stuff, it's her fault. Amen. Because but we want to save your lives. Amen. And so just ask those young ladies on your way out. I promise you they're good at what they do. Amen. Amen. Jonathan, you good? Amen. He's our regional minister of music. Amen. So we, we thank God for him. Amen. I told him and the church I didn't ever want to serve or go where they weren't willing to go. And so, you know, he came. Amen. By default, he didn't want to, but he had to come. And his wife, we just dragged her along. Amen. She don't have a choice, just like my wife. We just drag them along. Amen. And they just go with the flow. Amen. Pastor Martin is going to come and give us. You good? Oh, man. No. All right. He said, I'm good. Okay. Amen. You got any preachers with you? Reverend Martin. Cool. Reverend Martin, come on. Come on, do the benediction for us. Amen. Glory to God. We are a great family. Amen. 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 So you come through the benediction. Amen. Amen. Let's look to God to be dismissed. God, we thank you now for all that has been said and done. We thank you, God, for just giving us this night. Now may the peace of God. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. And to present you followers before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen.